give give our listeners a little bit of your Coach K influence because I think you got to meet him at one. Oh, I know you got to meet him. You just mentioned it, but what was the uh, what was the meeting like, and what did you glean from that that meeting, or how many more were there after that? Sure. And before I share that story, let me say that for me, you know, when when you get to I'll even say idolize someone from afar, and then you have an opportunity to actually meet them. Um, it's always fascinating to me when when someone can live up to or even exceed the pedestal that you've put them on. You know, I, I, I've certainly met some people that I admired from afar and met them, and they actually fell well short of expectation. It was almost as if the persona they were putting out in the world was different than who they were as a person. And, and I say that for a couple of reasons. One, that is really important to me that that because I put content out on social, because I speak on stages and I write, people are going to form an opinion of me and how I lead my life, my character, uh, my priorities, my core values. And, and I am I work extra hard to make sure that when I have a chance to meet someone, even if it's virtually like this, I want to not only live up to that, but I want to exceed that. Uh, I actually had a chance to meet Dean Smith a few times because I went to the Carolina basketball school um, in middle school and high school. I went okay. to the UNC yeah. camp and was always blown away at how present Coach Smith was. You know, these camps were massive. There were seven or 800 players that would come through this camp in a single week. And he would stand on the hot asphalt outside and would physically shake hands with every player while we got our picture taken. Wow. So I have several players of a, a, a much younger and scrawnier version of my current self with pictures with Dean Smith, who at the time was on the Mount Rushmore of college basketball coaches. And, you know, for a guy like that, at that point in his career, to take the time to look you in the eye and shake the hand of every single player that came through his camp, I just always was incredibly impressed by that. But then when we switch gears to Coach K, if you fast forward to 2008, um, I was working as the performance coach at Montrose Christian, which is a small private high school right outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, it's where Kevin Durant graduated from. He's our most notable alum. And I had a chance to talk to Coach K before one of our practices. Uh, he came to one of our practices because he was recruiting one of our players. And I had a chance to talk to him for 10 minutes before practice started. And, and it's kind of funny because as epiphanal as this moment was, you know, I'm, I'm getting a chance to meet my hero my idol. At that time, if you asked me if there was one person in the entire world that I wanted to meet, I would have said it was Coach K. And here I am having a conversation with him. And and I laugh now because I didn't quite have the presence or the, the level of awareness then that I'd like to think I have now, because I don't remember anything that, that either one of us <laughs> said during that conversation. I was just in pure awe. But I will never forget how Coach K made me feel. He made me feel like I was the most important person in that gym. Now I wasn't, the kid he was recruiting was the most important, but he made me feel like I was. Uh, very similar to what you're doing right now. He maintained a warm smile and had great eye contact. He had positive open body language, but most importantly, he, he had a genuine and authentic fascination and curiosity. And he kept asking questions about my life, about where I grew up, about you know the work that I did with the Montrose players. You know, he made that conversation about me. He didn't make it about him. And I was raised very old school. Uh, I was raised that when someone goes out of their way to do something nice for you, you handwrite them a thank you note. So that night I hand wrote him a thank you note. And I said something to the effect of, Coach K, you have no idea how much it meant to me to have a chance to finally meet you and talk to you. Thank you so much for all of your kind words and support. I'll always be rooting for you and Duke. And I put a stamp on it and I sent it off to Durham, North Carolina. And I figured that would be that. Well, funny enough, and I keep it right here. Three weeks later, I go to my mailbox and I get a note back from Coach K. Unbelievable. You know, here, here are three sentences in his iconic handwriting on the front of his stationery that in essence says the same thing. No, Alan, it was so nice to meet you. I enjoyed learning about you. I'm always rooting for you. Best wishes. And, you know, you, you can say, I know some of your viewers might not be able to see it. And certainly the audio folks won't be able to, to see this, but it's three sentences on the front of stationery, which I'm assuming took him about 60 seconds to write. And I think we can all acknowledge that over the course of our entire life, 60 seconds is a very little thing. Well, I'm just here to tell you that this little thing had a profound impact on my life. This little thing is the reason I wake up every single day with an attitude of gratitude to tell as many people as I possibly can, I appreciate you. 
thank you. Great job. This little thing is the reason I'm personally relentless about returning every email, every voicemail, and every text message, and even every social DM that I can, because I believe, and I don't think I'll get much pushback from you, but maybe from some of your listeners, I believe if the greatest coach in the history of all of team sports can make the time to handwrite me a note back, you better believe I can reply to your email. You better believe I can call you back or text you back. So this little thing made a huge impact in my life. And, and it reminds me that as, as leaders, you know, as coaches, as parents, as professionals, the little things we do can have a huge ripple effect. And many times we don't even know that effect. So, you know, very similar to the code that I live by, which is I want to exceed expectations when I get a chance to meet someone in person. I want to make sure that I'm always doing the little things because I have a feeling that, that the breadcrumbs I'm dropping could have a, a very positive impact on somebody else's life. There's so many uh, amazing parts of that that stand out to me. Number one, um, as you talk about Coach K and how he meets you, is his presence in that moment. You know, as busy as life gets for those that are high performers, for people that are out there, someone like that not forgetting in that moment just to be present with you made you feel warm and understanding. He also was doing something extremely imperative. And that is if you're trying to recruit somebody like Durant, anybody that's in that program, if you don't understand all the peripherals, all the people and humans that make up that individual, you're not building a relationship, you're just building a transaction. And so he was showing that he was building the relationship. And uh, you mentioned humility and, and ultimately being humble in the moment of understanding that a simple, you really were grateful. And I, I can imagine, I can put myself in that position and understand it. But him writing it back for 60 seconds was an impact on your life that you just described as something that was a waterfall of opportunity for all these other things that you've kind of, you know, catered your vision of who you want to be and how you want to be. And um, I love hearing that because I think that sometimes the very thing that made him one of the greatest coaches was that ability that you just mentioned to stay humble and authentic. Um, you, you've worked with a lot of young college athletes and, and young athletes in general. It, it, an assessment of mine, and I'd love you to tell me if this is right or wrong, but an assessment of mine is young people and kids especially, but young athletes are a very good judge of truth and character. And so these coaches that cut the Jay Wrights, the Coach K's, the, the um, you know, Calipari, all these guys that go out and just get the best Roy Williams, you know, they seem to have an authenticity about them that's consistent, while others tend to be more transaction driven. They tend to be, we can win together. You can win with me. I can win now. And it's not the same. So I, I'd love for you to elaborate on that thought for a second and anything else I just mentioned. No, you're so insightful. I'm glad you went in that direction. You know, it's been my experience that the best leaders they use the foundational mantra of transformational leadership. I mean, you just highlighted perfectly the difference between a transformational interaction and a transactional interaction. And the, the, the foundation of a transformational interaction is it's not about me, it's about you. You know, it doesn't mean you think less of yourself or that you don't prioritize your own self-care or that you lack confidence. It means you put equal value into what's important to others. And yes, it's been my experience that these top coaches in particular, when they're recruiting, they understand that it is about this young person they're recruiting and it's about their future and it's about their dreams. And, you know, if and, and, and at their level, the vast majority of people they're recruiting have the goal of playing in the NBA. So most of what's discussed during recruiting is not only on, on how, you know, playing for me and playing for our university um, can help you become a, a, a scholar and an athlete, but also it will enable you to reach your dreams because that's what's most important to you. And, and the coaches that get that and do it with sincerity uh, and authenticity are, are the ones that do it at the, at the highest of levels. And, you know, there's, there's kind of a, a part B and a part C to the coach K story that I very rarely tell. Um, one of them is I ended up seeing him again about a year later. And when I meet someone of that stature, um, I have always got the humility to think they don't remember who I am. I mean, I'm I'm going to go up and reintroduce myself as if I'm meeting you for the first time. And I I did go up to him again and said, "Hey, coach, I'm I'm Allen Stein Jr. We we met at Montrose last year." And he gave me a friendly wink and said, 
Oh, I remember who you are, Alan. I really enjoyed that conversation. Like he, it was just for, for somebody like that to remember me and a complete nobody in his life was, was really remarkable. Then another thing that I find really cool is I, I come to find out as special as I felt for him writing me that, that note back that he has written thousands and thousands of those handwritten notes that that I'm not necessarily unique that I got that because he's written so many of them. And I, I ended up finding out by a mutual friend um, that he practices something that another friend of mine calls systemized thoughtfulness. And systemized thoughtfulness, and in Coach K's case, was he would block off or have his assistant block off one hour on a Monday. And the only thing he would do during that hour would be handwrite notes. Uh, handwrite thank you notes back to people, handwrite thank you notes to people he wanted to be proactive with, handwrite right. notes to potential recruits, you know, but he would block that off because it was so important to him to handwrite those notes. And the reason my other friend calls it systemized thoughtfulness is he blocks off that hour and that's the only thing he's going to do. So he's built in a system for making sure that he has the time to do this. But when you receive a note from him, you don't feel like you're one of a thousand. You feel like you're one of one. You feel like the only thing he did was wake up that day and write you a note because that's how much you mean to him. So it, it doesn't detract from the thoughtfulness that you receive, but he systematized that. And I just think that's that's a brilliant way to do that because I've, I've given that, I've told that story on some pretty big stages around the world. And I've had several people come up to me after and say, oh my gosh, I have a note from Coach K. Like I had a similar experience. And I just think that is absolutely remarkable that that he was able to spread that much goodwill. And we're talking about a time period before social media and before things could kind of go, you know, viral digitally. Right. This guy's going viral old school way by writing handwritten notes and letting people like me preach from the, you know, preach from the pulpit about what it is that he did. So, yeah, I just I think that shows uh, his level of of character, his level of attention to detail, and how much he valued the little things. And you know, he did that for over forty years at at, at Duke. It's just it's absolutely mind boggling. If you like clips like this, I have a similar clip here. And if you want to watch the full video, click here.